see what's new on the Burlington waterfront. Hey, now it's happening at the waterfront on Lake Champlain. Whatever the weather, there's so much to do on the new waterfront, the Burlington waterfront. Hi, welcome to On the Waterfront. My name is Mariah Riggs and I'm your host today and I'm the director of the Main Street Landing Performing Arts Center. Today I'm extremely excited to be having my friend and one of my favorite people on earth here on the show, Christina Alisea, who is the producing artistic director of Vermont Stage. Yay! Yay. Thanks Mariah, to thanks the show. for having me. Thank you. Um, so, um, I guess let's start at the beginning. Um, for all of our viewers who are not familiar, what is Vermont Stage? So Vermont Stage has been around since 1994. This is our 28th season. And uh, we do contemporary theater in Vermont. So we call ourselves Burlington's home for contemporary theater. And so we've been, we've been doing that for some time now. And um, Wait, yeah, how many great. seasons? 28. I think it's our 28th season. I don't know, wow. the blip, you know, with COVID, it's sort yeah. of like a nebulous number, but yeah, it's like 27, 28. That's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. a long time. That's long great. Time. So it's an institution. It's totally an institution. We've got some <laughs> diehards that have been with us from for forever. That's wonderful. Yeah. Who remember who remember things before before I arrived, which is really, really great. Which kind of leads me into my next question. Um, so um, it's been about 28 years. Um, which means we also have to talk about your 30th anniversary, which is coming up. Oh Super my exciting. God. Never yeah. thought about that. Um, but how did you how did you end up becoming in, involved with Vermont Stage? Because you're not from Burlington. I'm not from Burlington. I grew up actually in the D.C. area, um, and went to college in that area for theater. Moved to New York and was pursuing that uh, freelance directing mm -hmm. for a number of years and producing. Um, and then this job opened up actually, and I. I applied. Um, they did a national search, mm -hmm. and I was like one of over 100 candidates, and thankfully they picked me. So that was 12 years ago. Now, did you ever did you have a lot of experience in Vermont? I had zero experience in Vermont. I've always wondered. I literally knew nothing about Vermont. <laughs> I have like a, a very vague memory of when I was like right out of college, going with a friend of mine who was who had friends in Burlington. Um, and said, let's go for a weekend adventure with my friends. And we came into town and we went like snowboarding and we had a great time. And so I had this very vague but fond memory of like, Vermont, I think Vermont's cool. And then I applied for the job. And, um, and then so the first time I was really here, like was when I was for my final interview. And it was January and the snow pile was like humongous high. And you still wanted the job? Yeah. It, it, wow, I, I was you crazy. were meant to be in Vermont. Yeah, that was totally crazy. <laughs> it was like super high. And uh, and actually I have a like funny memory of like one my the board chair at the time was like giving me a little driving tour of downtown Burlington. And we pulled in right in front of like where Main Street Landing is at the waterfront. And it was really snowy. So the entire lake was frozen over, covered with snow. This was like 2011. And I was like, wow, that's a big field. What is that? And he was like, that's the lake. <laughs> I had no idea. I had no idea that, that that was a lake. And I was like, it's a lake town. <laughs> it was like, yes, it is a lake town. That's like how little I knew about Vermont. Well, it does kind of resemble Siberia. Here. Yeah. Yeah, at the time I was like, this is a big field. <laughs> <laughs> totally ridiculous. That would have been impressive, actually. Yes, yes. Impressive field. Yes, exactly. So that's, that's what that's what I thought that that was. So oh my gosh. I've learned a lot since yeah. I've moved here. And yeah. it's really nice in July. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> it's a very different place in July. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great story. Yeah. I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> that's funny. So um, to kind of get back to Vermont stage, because, um, all right, so you got up here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, so I, I, I kind of want to help our audience understand because, you know, there's a lot of different uh, theater companies and, and you're talking about contemporary theater. Uh, they might not be as familiar with what that means, um, you know, because yeah. it is sort of a lexicon of the industry. Right. So, yeah, I didn't, so, th didn't think about that. Right. Yeah. yeah contemporary theater. Um, for me, I mean, for, for some people it's different, but I really see it as doing work that is representative of now, mm -hmm. you know, and more often than not, it's by writers that are still alive yep. and they're, they're like writing plays about, you know, our culture and our life now. Um, and, 
you know, and so, you know, Vermont stage in terms of what we do as an art form is, you know, I, I always say that you know, this isn't just entertainment. Mm -hmm. We're not, you know, yes, at, at the baseline thing we have to do, right, is someone comes to a show of ours and they have to at least be entertained. Yeah. Um, but we're also trying to start meaningful conversations with our community about, you know, relevant social issues, the things mm -hmm. that you know, that are impacting our daily lives. Yep. And we do that through these, you know, beautiful stories, you know, fun, entertaining stories and um, that are teeing up these conversations that we, you know, we should all be having amongst ourselves as, you know, conscious beings mm -hmm. that have to interact with each other every day, right? Um, and so, and so I find that it's the best way to do that is through this contemporary theater lens where you know, the the writers are just writing about what's happening now. Um, and, and when they're doing that, it really feels like it's representative of where, you know, we are mm -hmm. um, as a nation. And that's something that I've always been drawn to with in, in regards to Vermont Stage is that for me, especially contemporary art is in art in general is a reflection of the society that created it. Right, right? exactly. And exactly. so what I find so poignant about the work that Vermont stage and, and what's specific to it as, as, as a group mm -hmm. is that they are talking about relevant s subjects that are reflexive of our society at this point. Right. And, um, and, and that's really special, I think, in the state of Vermont. Um, you know, uh, Vermont, Vermont has a lot of historical stuff. Um, we tend to uh, like our comfort stuff, mm -hmm. um, but actually having stuff that's out in the forefront of, um, you know, things that are coming out of New York that are at the forefront of art right. and being in a place where we can actually have access to art that is current. Um, is, is a very special thing for a town our size. Yeah, absolutely. And that's something that I'm always thinking about as artistic director is, you know, we're starting these meaningful conversations, but I really see it as our duty as an, an arts leader in the state to ensure that we're doing the cutting edge work that's happening nationally. You know, the, the most exciting voices emerging in the you know American theater field or really like in Europe as well. Mm -hmm. um, and producing their plays here, right in Vermont. So then you come see our shows at Vermont Stage and then you could go to a major city like Washington DC or Chicago or New York and you're gonna see similar titles or by you know, mm -hmm. similar authors that, are, that, um, at, that we're doing. And you know, so we're making sure that um, in terms of people's like um, artistic cultural mm -hmm. uh, experience here that you know, we're, we're providing as much as you know, any major port city would. Which is amazing, right? Because we're a very small college town, right? You know, right. we are. We're a small college town, but we do have a lot of cultural um, contextuality. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot happening in our small town. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I always feel that Verm the Vermont stage is a big part of that. That gives us access to cosmopolitan ideas and and things that are forward thinking as opposed to being backwards thinking. Right, and you know, and I just wanna say, like preface this by saying, it doesn't mean we're not doing historical pieces mm -hmm. too. You know, they're written by a, a living writer and um, you know, they're sort of written through a contemporary lens, mm -hmm. which I think is the distinction, right, from doing a period piece yep. and that like that was <laughs> a true classic mm -hmm. that was written, you know, in the 1930s versus like a play we just did called The Pittman Painters, and that was recently written, you know, in the last 10 years, 15 years, um, and that's about the 1930s, right? Yeah. So the way that they're dealing with the subject matter is, a, you know, much more contemporary treatment of, of looking at the information that's happening, the story that's being told, um, as opposed to someone coming from the world of 1930s, writing a play about that yeah. time. It's right. about the perspective. Right, absolutely. And actually, from an audience standpoint, it's a lot easier sometimes to broach uh, historical context pieces through a contemporary lens. Right, right. Um, it's much more approachable. Right, um, and it's more relevant to yep. what we're talking about now, you know, uh, the way we're, you know, just the way that men and women interact, mm -hmm. um, you know, on stage, granted, there are some aspects of it that needs to be true to the, the period, right, and the, the interaction there. But I think there's a little more care mm -hmm. that that um, the writers are taking now um, when they're they're framing these um, mm -hmm. relationships between men and women mm -hmm. um, than maybe they did, you know, sort of unconsciously back. Yeah, then, yeah no, right? representation right. tends right. to be more, you know, it, it, it's definitely a little bit more consistent right. with contemporary norms.
Absolutely. Um, and especially as a female. Right. That's, I mean, that's, that's significant. That's I a mean, big part of it, too. It's like historically um, right. women tend to be support characters. Right. Um, or, are, or barely there. Or barely there. Right. I mean, right. They're, they're, they're the wife, the daughter, the right. mother. And right. they're sort of a support caregiver that falls into a yeah. certain trope. And there's not a lot there. Yeah. I mean, that's yet another reason why I absolutely just adore contemporary theater, because, mm -hmm. you know, it isn't writers of just, you know, sort of what, what we've historically had in terms of representation mm -hmm. is sort of the white male writers. Yep. You know, there is space now for writers from all walks of life mm -hmm. um, that are able to participate in this art form. And, you know, people write what they know, right? Mm -hmm. And so when we're including people of color or women, mm -hmm. um, they're writing uh, through their perspective. Mm -hmm. And that makes the, the writing you know, inherently more interesting, you know, when we can do a whole menu of different things, both mm -hmm. white male writers plus, you know, writers of color and women. And, you know, mm -hmm. we're able to, you know, just do like a, a much more um, interesting and dynamic season of plays now than what we, you know, would have done if we were just doing classics. Yeah. And it also shows a different perspective. Yeah. And I think your contemporary audience is looking for those perspectives. Right. Because they're more engaging, they're more interesting. I mean, we've heard, we've heard sort of the narrative uh, consistently of like sort of the white male trope for years and years and years. Right. And getting beyond that and looking at other perspectives is some of the stuff that digs in and it gets interesting. Yeah, it's just it it's just fun. makes it more fun. Right? It's <laughs> yeah, just more right. Fun, fun, fun it's is like fun is good. Including more people, <laughs> more voices. You know, you're throwing a party. You yeah. don't invite like ten of the same person. It's like all your friends, and they're all different, right? And it's going to be more challenging too. Um, and for me, I I think I mean this is my perspective, but I think that it's very important to engage in art that's challenging. It makes you think about the world, and so contemporary art, and specifically contemporary theater makes you as an audience member more participatory in it mm -hmm. because it's something that means something to you that that is current. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it challenges your perspectives and it kind of can reposition the frame of how you think about the world because it comes from your time and place, which makes it unique and valid. Totally. Really cool. And another thing that we do at Vermont Stage that I think is sort of unique to, you know, what we're bringing to this community um, is we're also supporting our artists through our work too. So, you know, every artist that works with our company is paid. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, we provide compensation for their artwork, which, you know, a lot of um, theater companies, organizations in the area, you know, can't necessarily say that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're making sure that we're showing value, not just from thanking them for um, their volunteerism, but we're also mm -hmm. providing them a stipend to say, you know, we also know that you have bills to pay. Yep. And so um, here is some compensation for that. Yeah, and I think that's an important point, too, that I don't think a lot of people realize is the fact that Vermont Stage has a model um, that's much more of a prof it's a professionally run um, theater group. Uh, we have a lot of volunteer theater groups that are absolutely exemplary across the state. But uh, one of the things that does make Vermont Stage unique is the fact that they use equity actors sometimes and right. they have a pay scale for all of their um, acting and crew. Correct, yeah. And it, you know, it's something that we, we believe in supporting the art for our community, but the mm -hmm. community also con, you know, consists of the artists too. Yep. Um, and so if we're really interested in truly bringing art to our community, we also need to kind of put our money where our mouth is. Yeah. Um, and, um, and also show, you know, um, you know, show some love to our artists too, who are working mm -hmm. really hard and what we do wouldn't exist without their their um, creativity and, yeah. and hard work, so. But it's nice to know that you give, I mean, there's, there, there's something about, um, there's not a lot of options in Vermont for people to professionally act. Right. And to make money doing so. And uh, Vermont Stage is one of those outlets for people to actually make a living doing yeah. what they want to do and act or in crew. Yeah. Well, and you know, I don't know, we don't do quite enough shows per year to provide <laughs> full-time jobs for people, but <laughs> certainly at least we're showing, you know, when they're in a, show, a Vermont stage show, we're showing that, yeah. you know, that we um, want to make sure that um, we're also showing that we care as which well. Is, through, which is a big deal. Through um, it's, it's, monitor it's tough. support. Yeah. It's tough in Vermont. I mean, I hear about that a lot. And so we, everybody appreciates Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank um, you. So um, I'm kind of, we kind of have discussed, I think, a lot of what sets Vermont Stage apart um, in the state. But I would like to, uh, people to understand what, you know, like 
we talk about a season before we start kind of get into that. Um, a traditional theatrical season at Vermont Stage, what does that look like? So we typically do um, four f what we call main stage productions at Main Street mm -hmm. Landing Performing Arts Center and, uh, and as well as two special events. Um, mm -hmm. And we do like one of the special events is called Winter Tales. We've been doing that for, oh gosh, I think this year was the 18th season that we've done, mm -hmm. 18th year we've done Winter Tales. Uh, it's a one week holiday show that we do, of an um, evening of story and s stories and songs. And then uh, in the spring we do a show called The Bake Off, which is like a experimental theater uh, fundraiser um, that we do in June. Um, and so our four main stage shows are these pieces of contemporary theater that we were, we were talking about. So it's, it's six shows. We end up doing around 90 performances. Mm -hmm. Approximately 10,000 people come to our shows annually. Which is significant yeah. for a state with 600,000 people. Right. <laughs> That's a pretty good number, actually. <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Um, and so, uh, so, so, so now that we understand, you know, in the season to, um, just so people know, it starts in the fall and it goes through the spring. Um, that's the theatrical season, in case anybody was wondering. Um, so, so we've we've launched the season this year. Mm -hmm. uh, what do, what are we looking for uh, this winter? What shows are we? So we're doing a play called Airness uh, by a woman named Chelsea Mark uh, Markintile, and um, and it's um, it is like this big joyous comedy about an air guitar competition. Um, and when I first read the play, I was sort of like, what is this strange world that this woman has created? Um, and then I realized, I dug in deeper and realized like, this is actually something that's real that happens in our country. Mm -hmm. Like it's an ESPN sponsored sporting event mm -hmm. where people have competitions um, that are voted on by the audience as like best air guitar routine. And so this is like a play that pay, you know, pays homage to this very strange uh, underground um, nerdy. Such like, an American <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> well, actually, it, you know, it actually started, in I Germany? believe, in Norway or oh, something. Oh, okay, because like, well, yeah. Nor Norway is a huge metal scene. <laughs> right, So yes. that's not surprising. Right, and th throughout the whole play, there's music uh, from the 1970s, 1980s, you know, big hair bands, like, Ooh. yeah, and and that's what they're doing their air, air guitar routines to. So, like, it's, it's, I'm calling it a play with music. There's, it's not a musical. They're not, there's no yeah. singing or anything. It's basically like just this feel good, like rock show with a story, you well, know? So the performers <laughs> must love this. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're, they're like, they're very earnestly dancing and doing air guitar throughout a huge portion of the show. That is so much fun. Yeah, and we're setting up the theater, um, you know, the black box yep. is configurable in whatever way we can imagine, and we're setting up cabaret style with cabaret tables, oh, and wow. you know, and we're building a stage, and so it's gonna be like, you know, as much of a rock event as we can, and we're, we're like doing sort of moving lights, and we're really going all out. Oh, it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be fun. Yeah. But no glitter, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No glitter. <laughs> yeah, that's right up there with the rice from um, from Rocky Horror Picture Show. Um, yeah. yeah, no, I I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, but maybe Boas confetti. Are okay. Maybe confetti. Yeah, maybe you know, confetti. Hey, we'll see. Bubbles. Good. All right, bubbles are awesome. Love bubbles. Yeah, so it's just going to be this big spectacle. Like you know, I've just been saying it's like this, just you know, just amazing, joyous event. You know, and it's yeah. really just like celebrating finding your passion and just you know going with it whatever it may be right and in, in the so circumstances are there different of, are there different like styles of air guitar oh totally so it's like totally. a whole nuance and there's a little representation of the styles in the in the story you know there's like the newbie and that's that's the character you follow in it yeah, um, where you know she's first learning about air guitar didn't really know it was a thing and then by the end she's like really into it and then there's the, you know the various other characters some are you know, you can embody different things when you're doing air guitar. You can really do it earnestly and like treat it like it's like, you know, yeah. something like really difficult. And then there are some people who it's all about style, you know, mm -hmm. big wigs and ridiculous costumes and, you and know, creating like a movements. character, right. You know, um, some that are much more like, you know, bringing the audience in um, and, and getting them super excited about it um, in terms of that 
kind of performance and some are doing like something intimate and personal. It's really, it like, the, and on YouTube, you've got to, you just go down that YouTube rabbit hole. It's real. <laughs> like there's just like. Did you do some research? Oh yes. We're, we're like have <laughs> so much fun going down the rabbit hole to see like who's won the national air guitar competition sponsored by ESPN. Like, yes. And Seriously. yes, there's all this footage of these okay. like crazy things. If you get a chance, <laughs> make sure you go down the YouTube rabbit hole and and check out ESPN's um, air guitar competition. <laughs> yeah, really. I, yeah. I will be sending that to my. Or they brother. can they can go to our website and we have like a link to you know yeah. because it, it's one of these things where, I, you know, you have to see it to believe it that this is a real thing that people are doing. Well, it sounds um, like it's intense. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely a an event. <laughs> well, that sounds like a really fun, play. but it's super fun and it's a comedy, obviously, yeah, and it's just like course. yeah, it's just it's just like a big ball of joy on stage Which is fabulous in the middle of winter to yeah. go see yeah so by the way this this show um is i believe the now when is the first uh performance it runs for three weeks from march 8th through the 26th okay so this is perfect timing yeah when you're in the doldrums of the end of winter right um looking at your calendar what you're gonna do just feeling kind of myopic about the entire world, right? <laughs> and like spring really hasn't come yet. And going sh going doing sugar on snow is like the highlight of your week, okay? This is the time of year where like late, like March is when I'm like, why am I in Vermont? It's the only time, of the, every other time of the year I'm like, I love it here. And then it, start in March, I'm like, what's happening to my life, you know? But that's so, when we need an right. air guitar and that's when we need, stage play. Yes, exactly. Yes. So, so if you're wondering how you get out of the doldrums, make sure you go see the air, air guitar stage play. Now, do, what is it called? It's called Airness. Oh, Airness. It's that's called Airness, and it's a whole thing in the script where they talk about like, you know, the best air guitar performances achieve quote unquote airness. Yes. So lighter than, yes, yes right? It right. like rises yeah. above. There's right. so much metaphor you oh, can go with. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and I'm sure absolutely. they have fun with that because oh, it really, yes. <laughs> yeah. that's great. Yeah. The holy airness. I mean, right. there, there's a lot. Yeah. There's a lot you can take from that. That's that's the life. Totally. Okay, so that's important. So again, mark your calendars. Um, it sounds like the second week of March, right after uh, town meeting day. Yeah. It kicks off for the entire month of March. Make sure you go check it out because it's going to completely drag you out of the March doldrums. Very, very important. <laughs> so true. So, um, so after 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 we get out of March, uh, I know you guys always do a second show. Yeah. So we're doing a play called Venus and Fur by David Ives. Oh wow! Um, and this is actually a remount of a hit a hit production of it we did back in 2014. So okay. like seven or eight years ago, we did that. Did the show. Um, it went really amazingly um, and I wanted to revisit it because the world has changed a lot since we did the, did it the last mm -hmm. time so um, this one is I don't want to give too much away about this place so what can I say about it? I feel like what I can say <laughs> it is uh, it is a comedic thriller ooh so it's very funny but also it's a bit of a thriller um, and really and like the, murders in the building and stuff? Uh, well, not, I mean, maybe, uh, not, I don't know. It's hard <laughs> to describe. It's a comedic thriller and, um, and it, um, but the heart of it and the, th the themes that it's exploring is really like, um, sort of abuse of power in the workplace. Oh. And as we know, you know, back in 2014, when we, we produced this place or this was my, um, through bringing this to light was mm -hmm. just like, let's talk more about like the imbalance of power when, you know. Um, was that pre Me Too? And that too? was pre Me Too. That's what, that's, and then Me yeah. Too came about like a, maybe two years later. Okay. And so, you know, when I was thinking about revisiting this play, I just liked the idea of going, how will audiences now, seven years later, mm -hmm. perceive this play, take this play in, talk about this play and its themes when we've been through this huge evolution, mm -hmm. you know, of thought around workplace relationships. Yeah. Um, and so um, I'm just fascinated to see like the conversations that are gonna be had around Yeah, how the dynamic, because the paradigm right. and the dynamic have shifted. It has, absolutely, it has. Like the way we talk about it, the way we're, you know, the care with which I think mm -hmm. people are, um, you know, interacting with each other in the workplace. Certainly it's something that both men and women are thinking about mm -hmm. much more mm -hmm. um, than they did 
prior well, there's a sensitivity. to it. Right, absolutely. I feel like there's a sensitivity and an acknowledgement. Right. Um, you know, that in, in a point of self-care. <laughs> Um, and, and for your fellow work people. I mean, it, 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 it's, a real, it's a real thing. It'll be interesting to see how that works. It, yeah, I'm really excited. And when we did it before, that was when we were sort of doing shows at Flynn Space, and so I'm really excited to see what it will look like, sound like, feel like at the Block Box at, at Main mm -hmm. Street Landing, because it's just, you know, a completely different space. And, yeah. and so I'm just, I'm really... Space and time. Absolutely. And change everything. Right. I mean, really. <laughs> or just like, you know, rereading it and, you know, talking to the cast about mm -hmm. it. And it's been something we're like, wow, this is going to feel really different, even though it's this, it's the same, but it's not the same. But it's also still a very relevant and important conversation. Right. Because I, I also feel, um, and maybe this is just me as a woman, but I feel like Me Too was an important kickoff towards a conversation that needed, um, you know, that needs to grow and move. It's just a part of a movement. Right. Right. It's like a wave. It created the wave and the ripple. But, you know, things are changing and it's going to take, you know, a generation or two to oh, actually. Yeah. Get where it needs to get anyways. Yeah. So. And um, absolutely like to, to have it be kind of second nature, the way we're interacting. And yeah. it's like a healthier fashion than we have in the past. But when um, was the uh, when was the play actually written? It was written, I think, in 20. I want to say we did in 2014, 20. 12 or oh, wow. 2011. So it was like post The Office, kind of like right. in that period. Right. And because it's funny, I watch The Office now and it seems so dated. Oh, really? Well, just you know the way they look and yeah. the way they dress and like the cooler talk and like it's funny. Huh. Yeah, how I much things have changed. That one. That's, yeah, well, I just I have a small child who just <laughs> recently became very obsessed with The Office. So, like, sorry. <laughs> Anyways, on that aside note, so uh, Venus and Furs. Yeah. That's very that's, exciting. Yeah, so that's happening April, May. Oh gosh, I don't have the dates off the top of my head, but yeah, it's yeah. on our website. It's always at the end of end of April, beginning of May, just when you're kind of coming out of it, the grass is turning green, right? Right. And you you know, you just want to get in there and like watch something really entertaining. It it be really great. is. It's and it's shocking and yep. surprising and you know, that, it, that's why I sort of call it a thriller because it's just you know, you think it's one thing and then it's something completely different. So it changes yeah. the paradigm through it. Oh, yeah, throughout, like uh, several times. Ooh, and, which yeah. is the best This kind. is one of these shows where the, the folks that have seen this play know what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, they know what I'm talking about and I can't say more. Okay. But I have to say that the, 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 the play that I have, that my audience members have come mm -hmm. up to me after shows to talk about mm -hmm since this is the most talked about still still to this day like last wow. summer I, we were producing a show and i had an audience member come up to me and say you know what i wish we would do is venus and fur again wow and little did that person know i was already kind of planning on doing that but that's the best kind of art the right. best kind of art is the kind of art you think can't stop thinking about every day no matter how it affects right. you right the seven stuff years that comes later back still keeps coming back like an earworm Seven years later, I love come up that. to me and say, you know what, I, I remember so well Venus and Fur. Can't wait. Yeah. It's exciting. So I wanted to bring up some other stuff really quickly. I, I you know, we've talked a lot about like the season, but um, for some of our audience members who aren't entirely aware, I know that there are other things um, that Vermont Stage does that, th that our audience might not be aware of. What other things in the community uh, does Vermont Stage participate in? So we do have an education program called Vermont Young Playwrights, mm -hmm. and we've been doing that since our inception. So for 28 yep. years, we've been doing um, Vermont Young Playwrights, and I think even through the pandemic, we continued mm -hmm. the program online, you know, virtually. Uh, and we work with local uh, middle and high schools, and we teach uh, young people how to write 10-minute plays. And we're basically introducing them to the art of playwriting. Um, and it's for us, it's yet another means of self-expression. You know, there's lots of forms of writing that um, students are introduced to, but playwriting is is like this sort of niche thing that maybe they don't discover until they're older, mm -hmm. you know, maybe in college or, or something. And so we like to try to introduce that earlier because it is in many ways very accessible for a young writer because mm -hmm. they're really writing dialogue. Yep. You know, they're writing conversations mm -hmm. um, and um, and it's fascinating to see what they, like the stories that they're writing. And it's interesting um, to think about how people talk. That's right. something we don't do, and maybe at that age too, thinking about how conversations happen, what people say. 
Mm -hmm. And then having to write it makes you think about how you talk and what you say. Right. Which is or so Or having important. to write, like, if they're writing an adult voice, yep. like a parent or something, how, how do they write the parent's voice? How do they write, you know, and it... And how do my parents sound when they talk? Right. And how is it different than how I talk? Because it's also how you show yourself to the world, which I think sometimes young people aren't really aware of. Right, and, how, and then also the parts of playwriting that are, like, inherently interesting, like, how do I tell this story with just dialogue? Yep. You know, not all this descriptions of the location and the place and all yep. the stuff that happens when you're writing a novel. You can go into like, you know, really flowery language, flowery language around like, you know, this is set in this and that's that. You know, with playwriting, it's really spare and every word is Counts. important. Yeah. And it also leads to other things. That conversation is natural. It's not narrative. Right. And, and I just love it because if the things that you know, these middle and high school students mm -hmm. are writing, sometimes they're like extremely profound too. They have some insights that I think we're not really, we don't maybe realize mm -hmm. how insightful they can be at 11. That's I mean, amazing. truly, it, it's amazing. So I'm gonna quickly make sure that all of you know how to, um, Vermont Stage as an important cornerstone of the fabric of our cultural community here in Vermont. I wanna make sure that all of you have an opportunity to understand how to get involved with Vermont Stage. There are volunteer opportunities at Vermont Stage. Uh, you can find out all about them at www.vermontstage.org. Uh, they're always looking for ushers and people to volunteer and help. It's an incredible program. Uh, make sure you look at it on the website and check it out. You will also find information there on ticketing and uh, upcoming performances. Um, Christina, it's been great to have you on the show. It's been so a lot good. of fun to talk thank to you. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, it's been a joy. It's been a treat. Uh, thank you all for uh, being here with us today. Um, have a wonderful time, and I'll see you right back here next month. Take care. Right.